Howdy friends, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm going to teach you how to identify my friend Yarrow. We are officially in summer here in Southern Ontario, so there's gonna be a lot of identification videos coming your way. Um, I will briefly discuss some of the medicinal properties of yarrow as well, but this is more focusing on how to identify this plant because I think flowers with a white structure make people nervous because they don't know if they're working with Queen Anne's lace or hemlock or yarrow or elderflower. And when we start to get some basic botany, under our belts, we feel more confident. And when we're more confident, we can then start making medicines and moving forward with our home apothecaries and all those beautiful things, which is what I want for all of you guys. If you want a detailed um, monograph or like a mini herb book on Yarrow, I've got lots of them available actually on Teachers Pay Teachers. So if my membership platform is something that's like, whew, that's a bit too robust for me, um, you know, you're looking for a more accessible price point, you can check out the mini ebooks that I have on a wide variety of plants. So I'll put that link below. That being said, if you really want to deep dive into your herbal medicine practice, learn how to make tinctures, how to actually formulate, how to support different systems of the body and get into the nitty gritty, I do invite you to check out Weavers of Plant Wisdom. All that information is going to be in the description below. But without further ado, let's get to know yarrow. So Yarrow's botanical name, or the variety of Yarrow that I use, is Achillea millifolium. Um, and these names actually do serve an importance. <laughs> I tell my students this all the time. I'm like, you don't have to know how to pronounce them, but understanding the sciencey names of plants makes sure that like, it allows you when you go to the greenhouse and you want to buy plants for the purposes of making medicine and then add them to your property and your gardens that you're getting the right plant. So that's really important. But they also tell us stories and they um, teach us like what these plants were used for. So Achillea was named after the Greek god Achilles. And there's a lot of different stories about how exactly um, these two things became associated. But one of the most famous stories was that his mother, who was worried because memory serves, Achilles was a demigod. So he was partially mortal and she was worried that he might be killed, uh, dipped him in the river Styx to... Uh, you know to protect him and the river sticks had yarrow growing all around it so the water was infused with this you know achillea magic and fatefully when she held him she held him by his heel when she dipped him in um, there's also stories about how achilles who was a great warrior and very skilled with the bow and arrow would carry yarrow in his satchel to help stem bleeding because it's one of the best things that I know it for. I mean, other than being a really great bitter to support the digestive system and a lot of its other amazing properties, it is a topical styptic. It helps to stop bleeding and almost instantly, friends. Like this is one of those plants that in terms of herbal first aid, you should really get to know. Um, but what I'm going to do now is turn the camera around. I'm going to talk about the flower formation and I'm going to give you some other examples so you can see how they do look different. And then we're going to talk about the leaf formation. And once you see those two things, I promise you, you will never mix this plant up with anything else. All right, so here is some yarrow that has just come into bloom in my garden. I have it growing all over the place. So the flower structure of yarrow, while it looks like an umbel, and I am going to show you an example of an umbel, is actually a corum. And so if you want to get all fancy pants and go into your botany, uh, one, snag the book Botany in a Day, really great. Uh, but two, you're going to look up the difference between a corum and an umbel. And so right away you can see the way that the flowers are attached to the stem and how they form these really beautiful clusters. As you can see, pollinator, bees, flies, all the things. There we go. Now within the corum, there are individual floor like individual little florets essentially five petals really really beautiful plant yellow center but they form these clusters and they tend to flower sorry i'm having trouble but there we go they tend to flower from the inside and then work to the outside of the corum so now what i'm going to do is i'm going to walk over to my elder flowers which could be something you might confuse this plant with um, 
maybe elder gets quite a bit bigger <laughs> but i want to show you the difference between the corum which is this flower structure and an umbel so as i walk over there i do want to point out that queen anne's lace and i'm hoping i can find because there's none in flower right now but i'm hoping i can find some leaves um, is also an umbel flower formation very similar to the elder flowers i'm about to show you i have videos on how to positively identify queen anne's lace versus hemlock and how to identify elderflower. So I'm gonna include those in the description below as well. Okay, so first big difference <laughs> between elders and um, yarrow is the sheer size. If you're quite horrible at keeping your elders pruned, like I am, they get jibungus. But there is a slight botanical difference in the terms of the flower structure, and you really notice it from the underside of the elderflower. So it's similar, but different. The petals are also different on elderflower. But if you want more, again, five, but not as prominent a yellow center, they do look different. And I wanted to make sure that I could show that to you. I have a video on identifying elderflower or elderberries, so I won't spend too much time here. But again, I'll show that kind of underside and it gets the name umbel because it kind of forms almost like a dome shape. And it's much more prominent and noticeable with a Queen Anne's lace. So if I can overlay a photo here, I will do that for you guys too. Because it has that kind of like umbrella type shape, which is why it gets the name umbel. All right, friends. So here we're going to pay close attention to the leaves of yarrow. This is where yarrow gets its, um, the second half of its botanical name, millifolium because either there's translations of thousands of leaves or bearing numerous leaves, depending if you're looking at Greek or Latin. Let's see, oh yeah, there. You can kind of see it with my hand for that contrast in the background there. I'm trying to clear up. Ah, beautiful, okay? So we're looking at kind of like fern-like leaves. If you've ever grown carrots before, it's actually quite, quite different. Um, and so once you see how these leaves differ from Queen Anne's lace, which is a wild carrot, again, you're never going to mistake it. It's very fern or feather-like in, um, in its structural formation. Another thing to pay attention to is how they grow in an alternating pattern. So one side, then the other, then one side, then the other. This is what we call alternate in botany, and so they'll attach to the stem in an alternating pattern that way. But these are the leaves of yarrow. Now I'm hoping to do a future video on making a styptic powder. So to add to your first aid kit at home, and I'll often just use the leaves. For poultices, like if my son's cut himself or I've cut myself, I'll just come out and grab these leaves, chew them up, slap it right on the wound. Uh, works very, very well came out to the end of my driveway because there's almost always Queen Anne's lace growing here and it does not disappoint. So I'm going to show you the Queen Anne's lace leaves. So that way you have that comparison. So this is not yarrow, this is Queen Anne's lace and you'll see how it's quite a bit different. Here we are, end of my driveway and here I have some Queen Anne's lace growing. So like I said, if you've ever grown carrot before, <laughs> you're very familiar with these leaves. These are the leaves of a little tiny Queen Anne's lace. So one of the things that's different is this stem is growing directly from the ground, um, not attached to the stem of the Queen Anne's lace flower, which hasn't flowered yet, um, not even close. This is just a little baby, but you can see that this is a carrot-like leaf. I mean, Queen Anne's lace, Dacus carota, is a wild carrot. So very, very different from yarrow. I wish I had them side by side, <laughs> but hopefully uh, the two video footages are enough for you guys. Well, there you have it, friends. You have gotten to know my friend Yarrow, otherwise known as Achillea millifolium. Um, great plant to get to know, even just for basic herbal first aid. This would not be one that I would be without. I've done other videos too where um, I really love planting herbs that have multiple purposes. So one, I can use this topically, like I said, for first aid. It's really good for infected wounds, inflammation, cuts, scrapes, bites, stings, all that jazz. Um, really great for things like varicose veins. <laughs> but I also use it internally 
for as a really great digestive bitter and some of its other amazing properties supporting the female reproductive system again topically or internally for things like varicose veins and supporting the cardiovascular system but it's also really pretty <laughs> and it makes for a great perennial to add to your garden a hardy perennial that'll come back year after year and so if you want your gardens to sort of multitask for you so you have these beautiful spaces where you don't have to worry about annuals every year you can have your curb appeal and your medicine too now if you've got any questions on how to identify yarrow um, drop those below don't forget to check out all the links there's going to be a bunch down there including um, my link to the mini book if you want that for yarrow also um, to weavers of plant wisdom bought me in a day as well as any of the other videos i've mentioned in this video so scroll down check out that description if you like my content i always appreciate a thumbs up and a subscribe to the channel that helps youtube algorithms to tell other people to watch my stuff that's how that works that's why we ask you to like our content so if you don't mind give me a thumbs up and until next time this is corinne from spirea herbs wishing you health and wellness